drop the whole box of screws. G'day everyone, welcome to this episode of Needle DIY. I want to make a quick video, show you how to hang plaster sheets and what you need to keep an eye out for. Now there are two different situations for hanging plaster. That'll be a room where there's no tiles and a room where there is tiles. So there is some differences there that I'll explain, but for now we're in a wardrobe. I'll show you how to hang the simplest sheets and what you need to know. So obviously you want to make sure you've got your right length of plaster. I'll show you how to cut that, but it's pretty straightforward. You can either use a T-square or a straight edge or anything you have just as a ruler. Um, but once that's cut, we want to apply stud adhesive to the middle of the studs. And the only place you put screws is on the perimeter of the sheet, so the top, the bottom, and the two sides. And everywhere else you use stud glue. Now, we've got windows up here we needed to consider, instead of attempting to cut those holes out before we install the sheet we're actually better off installing the sheet and cutting the holes later and just tracing that opening with a knife or a saw uh, and that's going to give you a much more accurate result so that's the approach to that that's the same approach to power points as well so we'll install the plaster over the top of the power points so we'll make a note of where they are and then we'll just trace it out with a knife or a plaster saw so let's put on some stud adhesive three or four dobs on the stud uh, and the noggins as well. Don't be afraid to use lots of this stuff. I've already cut my sheet to length, so I'll bring that in. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind as well is your first sheet. Usually you put it on at the bottom because it's easier. It makes the next sheet above easier as well. So one thing to keep in mind is I've got a 10 mil packer at the bottom of the plaster sheet, and that's just good uh, building practice. Alright, so I've got enough screws at the top of the sheet here to hold it in position, but I haven't put any screws down the side or at the bottom yet because it would make it too hard to pull this packer out, which is just an off-cut of plaster. Now before you put your plaster on, make sure you mark the uh, studs, and that way you know where to put your screws. You also know where to put your nails when it comes time to put skirting on, so make sure you don't forget that. If you do, just use a straight edge and plumb it down from the top where you can still see what's going on. Alright, now that's probably the most basic situation you're going to come across with plastering. But once you have that up your sleeve, you can see that there's no screws in the middle, just on the perimeter. Uh, and these walls aren't tiled, they're just going to get painted. That's all we need to do for now. The stud glue will hold it in the middle. I'll move on to the next sheet and show you how to cut out these windows. Uh, and then I'll move on to showing you how to patch in with existing plaster and then we'll move on to doorways uh, and wet areas where they're going to be tiled. Get it ready to put this top sheet on now. I'm going to actually measure that in because it's uh, less than a full sheet tall. Now the other thing too is we've got these back blocks up the top here. I'll show you a close up of them. But they just support the um, old plaster and the new plaster because there's no rebate in the plaster. Now if you don't know what the rebate is, the rebate is that little depression in the edges of the sheet. It's only at the uh, on the long sides, not the short sides. So you won't find it at the ends, you'll only find it on the long sides. Now, with that rebate, it actually allows for more material when you come to stop it up with the uh, plaster, the putty. So, where you have two rebates meeting each other, you don't actually need to put back blocks unless it's a ceiling. So on the walls, it's fine. Uh, and obviously up here we don't have a rebate and we'll also be cutting off the rebate to make the sheet fit. So that's why we need back blocks at the top. They can either be glued on and made out of plaster or screwed on and made out of timber or metal or something that you can screw into easily. Now we'll come back at the end uh, and cut the hole out for the window but that's pretty straightforward as well. We'll just use a handsaw and a knife uh, and that'll be all we need to do. So you can see at the top there the back blocks, they're just some weatherboard off cuts. Uh, and they will help support the plaster when we screw it up. 
Okay, when it comes to cutting your sheets, it's pretty straightforward. Generally, the sheets will suit your house. Um, sometimes they won't, so you'll have to cut them in both directions. But to start off with, you draw out your measurement. You could mark it at this end. Generally, your off cuts are pretty small if you've measured your sheets right. So I've just made a mark at 2300. I don't actually need to cut this sheet, but for this case, this example, um, you mark 2300. I know the sheets are 2400. So instead of marking 2300 again, I can just mark 100 from this edge, which is a lot easier. And then I can use a level, like a spirit level, and connect the dots. Or if you're feeling fancy, you buy yourself a T-square, which already has the measurements on it. Uh, and also saves you the trouble of marking at the bottom. You can just mark at the top and square down. You don't even have to trace the line. You just mark the line uh, and then run your knife down, score and snap. So I don't need to cut this particular sheet to length, but that's how you would do it. I do, however, have to cut it across the top because it is too large. And what I want is 1150, and I know the sheet is 1200 wide, so all I have to do is take 50 mil off the top. I generally like to draw the whole line for these types of cuts. Now, if your square doesn't reach into the middle of the sheet, if that's what you need to do to cut your sheet, you can either use a really long straight edge, a long straight piece of timber, or you can use a chalk line as well. Now with your cuts, you only have to score the sheet and then snap it and then cut the cardboard at the back. So don't feel like you've got to cut all the way through from the front. Just a nice light cut. And then we'll snap that off. So now we can get a wide grip and just snap that. And then come from the back of the sheet. And just follow that fold and cut through the back. All right, this sheet's good to hang. We'll take it inside and I'll show you what's next. Now you don't need to put stud glue where you put your screws. So like I said at the beginning, that's the perimeter. It's also uh, where these window cutouts will be because we'll be screwing the sheets in at those cutouts. We don't actually need to put any glue up here. Now I should be able to bring the sheet in on my own uh, and then rest it on top of the other sheet. Hinge it up, uh, get a few screws in and then we can run around with a straight edge uh, and make some lines for our screws uh, and make some more lines for our cuts. Sometimes you don't always get your cuts right. It's exactly what's happened to me here. Uh, everything fits in except for this little corner here. So I'm just gonna cut it while it's on the spot. There's no need to pull that sheet down uh, unless it's really, really wrong. All right, so I made some reference marks on the plaster at the top and the bottom. I'll just connect the dots uh, and that'll give me the outline for my window. Now normally you just cut that with a plaster saw or a hand saw. I don't know where mine are, um, I've obviously left them at home or something like that so I will be improvising using a reciprocating saw. You can do it, it's pretty messy but um, any damage we do uh, with the poor cutting method will be covered up anyway by the architraves later. Alright, this sheet's going to be a bit of a fun one. It's 
vertical. Yes, you can run your sheets vertical. Uh, it's not just because this is a cavity slider, but it is just the best use of this sheet. Now, this is also going to be a fun one because the ceiling is raked uh, and we've got the cutout for the door. So, just to establish my measurements, I basically started by coming the width of a sheet across from the wall. So, 1200. I marked 1200 here. And then I used a straight edge or a spirit level. I went plumb up there. Um, you don't want to measure your 1200 on the angle because it's actually a 10 to 15 mil difference up the top. So make sure you're measuring plumb and level. Uh, and then don't worry about measuring the angle, just measure the length of the sheet uh, at both edges. So the short edge and the long edge. The angle will take care of itself when you connect the dots. Um, and then just measure what needs to be left in. So 910 needs to be left in. Um, and then I can measure down from here. 600 needs to be left in or a certain amount needs to be taken out, which is generally 2100 for your doorways. Now I just like to mark my rails as well. This is helpful for architraves and plastering. We also mark uh, studs at the top. I find it most helpful to draw a picture. I'll show you that. Uh, and then go out and cut it. Take your time with it. You don't want to get this one wrong. Uh, and then all should be good. So this is my drawing here. Basically the width, uh, the height on the short edge, the height on the long edge all the way, even though there's a cutout. Uh, and then the amount I needed to cut out here. So. Those are the only numbers I need, and then everything will take care of itself. Alright, it's a new day, we're continuing with the plaster in the wet area, this ensuite. So, when you come across an ensuite, there's going to be lots of protrusions coming through the wall, like your pipes, uh, water points, taps, things like that. We've also got to allow for the shower base. Now, I just want to give you a quick tip on measuring these things out. Basically, start with what's easy, cut your sheet to the right length, your overall measurement, and then draw a picture of where all your things are going to roughly end up, uh, and then write down your measurements for those. So, when I measure, I'm always measuring from the same end. Don't measure one edge from that end and then from there. Like you want all your measurements to be taken from one side uh, and either down from the top or up from the bottom. So for this cistern that's inbuilt into the wall, um, I'm measuring both edges from that edge. And the same thing, I'll come up from the bottom and for the pipe down here, I'll come from the same side. So. Apply that to all your measurements uh, and you shouldn't run into any issues and you also want to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room obviously if you're working too exactly um, things aren't always going to work out as planned so give yourself some wiggle room and you should be all right. All right I've just marked my studs on the floor again also if you can't do that say you don't want to draw lines on your shower base um, we know all the studs run all the way through so we can just plumb down from the top uh, and that'll make a bit more sense in a second once I get the sheet in. Alright, so you'll notice I used a lot more screws and no stud adhesive on this sheet. This is because this sheet is going to be tiled uh, completely, so where you're tiling, you want your screws to hold the weight of the tiles and the plaster. So, lots of extra screws, no need for stud adhesive, uh, and that is the major difference between uh, wet area plastering, where there's going to be tiles, uh, and just general plastering, like what we did in the wardrobe. So, with that in mind, 
The good thing about stud adhesive is that it can allow for any ins and outs in the timber from stud to stud. So instead of getting the, wor the walls perfectly flat, um, you can just let the stud adhesive do its job and pick up any um, ins and outs. So the other difference with wet area is because you can't use stud adhesive and also because you're tiling, um, you want your walls as flat as possible. So you really have to pay a lot of attention to how these walls are straightened. Uh, and you want everything nice and plumb because your tiles are just going to follow the plaster. So if the studs are wrong, the plaster's wrong, and then your tiling will be all over the shop. So that is another reason why we get these walls so straight, and then we screw everywhere we can. You know, one screw every stud, every two to three hundred mil, uh, all the way across the, the bottoms, uh, and then not across the top because of that rebate. So keep that in mind. That's the major difference. Uh, I'm going to finish hanging up these sheets. And then in another video, uh, I will explain stopping up in different areas, wet areas, dry areas, once again. So I'll go over new plaster, patching plaster. Um, we've also got some plaster butting into the weatherboards here, which is a bit of an unusual setup. So there'll be plenty to learn in that video about uh, all the different techniques we use to stop up plaster and get it looking nice and neat. So until then, make sure you subscribe uh, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.